Hello everyone. In this video, I want to give a technical overview of how a push payment works. I am going to take mVisa QR as an example. So what I mean a technical overview? I am going to cover the backend technical applications involved and the message flows between various applications. In this video, I will give a brief functional overview of how mVisa QR flow works. I am going to cover a technical flow of the messages involved and I am going to also talk about few miscellaneous points. So let's start with mVisa QR flow from a business perspective. First at a merchant location the acquirer provides the merchant with a QR code and the customer scans the QR code with an issuer provided application. The mobile application forwards the transaction details to the issuer bank and the issuer bank holds the funds, checks the customer details and then forwards the transaction to Visa. Visa further forwards the message to acquirer who would credit the merchant with the transaction amount and then provides a notification to the merchant. This is a functional overview or the business flow of a mVisa transaction. Now let's look at what happens behind the scenes technically. So the first step is customer scanning the QR code using a mobile application. So this mobile application is provided to the customer by the issuer. Issuer also hosts a mobile application server which is a server component of the mobile application. So when the transaction is performed by the customer, the mobile application, the end application pushes all the merchant details and the transaction details to the mobile application server using an API. The mobile application server gets the request and performs validations like checks if the customer is registered and checks if the device is the right device that is a registered device that's being used and also authenticates the customer. After successful authentication, the mobile app server sends a transaction API to the issuer switch. Again, the mobile app server is at the issuer end and the issuer switch also is hosted at a issuer end. So what happens here is the mobile app server sends an API to the issuer switch for validation of the customer details and check if the customer has enough balance on the account. So the issuer switch here does normal authorization checks like checks the account status, checks if the account has enough limit and after successful validation it holds the funds. So if you look at all the three steps that I have mentioned here, all happen at the issuer end. So once the funds are held at the issuer end, the issuer triggers an original credit transaction to Visa. It is also called as an OCT message. So this is one of the important message uh, which Visa specifies. There are two options for the issuer to trigger an OCT. The mobile app server itself can trigger an OCT message to Visa after holding the funds at the issuer switch end or the issuer switch which historically would handle ISO 8583 messages can also trigger an OCT message to Visa. Usually issuers maintain one or the other, option one or option two. But the key thing here is the trigger of OCT message to Visa. This is also called as push funds. If you are registered in the developer Visa portal, you can read more about this. It is called push funds. Visa, once it receives the push funds message from the issuer, forwards the message to the acquirer. So for implementation of mVisa or any of this API based real time uh, messaging, the acquirer side also would need to implement something called as pull funds. 
if the acquirer is opting for API based M visa. So what happens here is the acquirer implements an API based a pull funds API request who would receive the request from visa and then credit the amount to the merchant. If in case the acquirer is not using API based messaging, the acquirer can fall back onto traditional ISO 8583 bound inbound messages to receive the funds that is to receive an OCT. So in this case, if you look, Visa provides an option either to implement new API based payment payment methods or use traditional 8583 as well. Subsequently, when the acquirer receives the transaction, acquirer credits the amount and also notifies the merchant about the payment. Finally, the acquirer sends the response to Visa who would further forward the response to the issuer mobile app server and the customer is notified about the transaction completion. So this gives an overview about the various technical components involved typically in real time push payments scenario. So from an issuer perspective, the issuer hosts a customer app, an end customer app and a mobile application server and an issuer switch or the core CMS component. And from an acquirer perspective, there is always a payment switch which facilitates the inbound payment messages. Few other points to touch upon. The merchant QR code can either be static or dynamic. Static QR code is where typically a sticker is pasted at a merchant location. The acquirers provide that to the merchant or the acquirers can also provide a mobile application to the merchants which generates a dynamic QR code. So in case of a static QR code, the customer has to enter the transaction amount man manually whereas in case of a dynamic QR code, the transaction amount is given as a part of the QR code. MVISA is a single message based system which means that all these transactions happen real time. These transactions are not reported in a clearing file to the issuer. So the issuer needs to receive these transactions in the raw file and then create a process to post transactions to the respective accounts. Thank you for watching the video. Do like the video and post your comments. Thank you.